Well, after years of unfaithful service, the old girl finally died. Won't start, won't run. So the dilemma I've come to is that I need a new pressure washer. So I've basically got two options. I can buy one, which of course is the easy option. Buying one, it was a little small, homeowner grade one. They're about $400, not a huge cost, but it's $400. Or I can build one. And building one, because of what I have already on hand, which I've already paid for, but some of it's years ago, I can build one for, I think, around $300. So those are my two options. So the difference is building one, it's gonna be a lot better than what I can buy. So the pros of building one, uh, the cost, it's only $300, which is less with a better product. Second pro is that I already have the majority of the parts on hand. So out of, that's why the out-of-pocket cost is so low, because I got parts on hand. Third thing is, I'm gonna make this thing portable. Uh, what I mean by portable is, I'm going to put it on a trailer. So the entire unit will be contained. It'll have its own water source, its own power source, everything all together on one trailer. And the reason that's important is I've got different things around the property that are nowhere near where I have water lines. So having that tank will help a lot with those type of things. Also in the shop, I don't have any water down here, so I can pressure wash stuff outside the door here. That's great for like greasy, nasty stuff that I just don't want up near the house. And then the fourth thing is unlimited power. So this thing is going to have around 400 horsepower, which is obviously extreme overkill for a pressure washer. But it's what I've got on hand, and I think it's going to be cool. So that's what it's going to get. So the cons of this build are obviously number one is time. I estimate I'm going to be spending around 50 hours doing this. So 50 hours worth of time to save $100 isn't really worth it, but because this is going to be so much better than anything I can buy, I can justify that. Second is fuel consumption. So the fuel consumption, it's going to be, I estimate around one gallon per hour. And the reason it'll be high but low is that I can idle the engine at 750 RPM and that will give me plenty of power because right now the pump that I'm going to be using it only uses a three horsepower motor so at 750 I'm not going to be producing the full 400 horsepower I'll probably be at I don't know 50 horsepower or 40 horsepower but that's still plenty for what I'm doing so that's going to be the fuel consumption but since this is just home use and use around the shop so it's not like I'm using this thing all day every day for eight hours so it's really negligible on the fuel consumption but it is higher than if I wouldn't buy a unit. So that's where I'm at. That's my justifications for doing this and kind of the thought process I went through. So let's go look at the parts I'm gonna use. So this is what I'm using for the power plant. So this is an older Chevy 350. Obviously I'm coming to you from the future because it's already sitting on the trailer. I lost some of my footage. So that's why some of this might not make sense in the beginning, but this is the power plant. Chevy 350, it's got an Edelbrock 750 carb, Edelbrock Performer RPM intake, and it'll Brock Performer RPM cam. It also has some higher compression pistons, right around 400 horsepower when I first built this. Obviously it's a little bit crusty, so it's a little bit older. So well, I don't know, we'll call it 350 horsepower at this point, but it doesn't really matter. So I pulled this out of the RX-7 when I LS swapped that, and I don't really ever see myself using it for anything else. So I figured it would be a good choice for this project. My plan is to run the pump off the belt drive on the front of this. I'll have to make some kind of an adapter plate over here. Should be pretty easy. Engine was an easy setup in the car. It's just an alternator already. No power steering, no air conditioning, nothing else. So it's ready to go. All it needs is a fuel pump and a fuel tank and a battery. This is all the mess of wiring and gauges and everything that I pulled off of the RX-7 when I swapped it. And in this, I've got two pumps. These are both 12 volt, uh, like four PSI pumps for running carburetors. The reason I have two is my fuel tank had corroded. So I actually ran the engine off of this tank just to move it around for a little bit. So all I need is a bigger version of this and I've already got two fuel pumps ready to go. 
I've got plenty of gauges to run everything. Uh, fuel pressure gauge, relays, wiring, everything I need. For my pressure washer head or pump, what I'm using is I've got this old industrial pressure washer that I bought at an auction. And it's got a three horse motor and it's got an eight gallon per minute pressure washer head. So I can use this to belt drive it directly off the front of the engine. This is my collection of pallet racking. So what this is, is, well, it's pallet racking. And if you don't know what that is, it's basically shelves to stack pallets on. So these are kind of like big Lincoln logs or Legos, and they just bolt together whatever configuration you want. These were another auction score. I got this whole pallet. There was about uh, maybe 60 or so of these on here. I got it for like 30 bucks. Uh, apparently nobody wanted it. And I use them for all kinds of projects. These are all just cutoffs where I've cut off the different brackets and just use the straight sections, but it's good steel. It's about eighth inch thick with quarter inch plates welded onto them. So it comes in handy for projects like this. This is what the trailer is going to be made out of. For the axle of the trailer, I'm just using an old 7.5 inch from an S10. I've got a couple of these laying around from 8.8 swaps, so cheap and easy and just happens to be laying around. I've got the frame all welded up. This is going to be the bottom of the frame. I've got the top welded also and flipped over. So this is the downside of using a car or truck axle for your trailer axle is the width. So you won't get a full axle width with a car axle, but it's free. So, and for this application, this is going to be fine. So this is my layout for where the axle is going to go. I got some leaf springs off of a Silverado in the junkyard. Super cheap, like 25 bucks each. And I was able to get the frame mounts. I just cut these off with a Sawzall. And then for the rear, I got the shackle. And I also got the mount for the frame from the truck. So I've got the whole OEM type setup. All I gotta do is lay it out, pretty much weld these brackets on, and I'm basically done. All right, the time has come. All welded up. Got my leaf spring shackles welded on. Got my tongue welded on. So it's time to flip this thing. This is the part you really want to watch, to watch this idiot possibly kill himself. This thing's about 500 pounds. I'm going to use a couple chain falls to see if I can flip it. Alright, here's the super sketchy part where I've got to flip the apex. All right, the surgery was mostly a success. Uh, if you're watching, I did have one failure, and that is when I welded these braces, because I, I welded this part, flipped it over, flipped it back over, welded this box, flipped it over, flipped it back over, then connected them with these. So I only welded on the underside, and it flexed at these four joints, except for that, well, three joints. That one I actually tacked right down in that corner, and it held. So I would have been better off if I would have welded these joints completely while it was upside down. And then I wouldn't have had that issue. But anyways, so now I'm going to set it up on these jacks. I'm going to level it as best I can. And then I'll burn in all these joints that are now on the top for me. And finish cutting these little ears off. Couldn't get a blade down in there while it was upside down. Should have cut it before I started welding, but whatever. I'm going to burn all this in, mount our suspension, 
and then we're ready to drop an engine on this thing. Got some junky old tires I had laying around put on. I'll have to get some good ones. But uh, axle's in. Got the weight of the trailer on the axle right now. It looks like I got plenty of space. So I might put some lowering blocks depending on how it sits once I've got the engine and water tank and everything put on here. So far so good. Time to mount the front stuff. When you're building a trailer that can slam into the back of your car and kill you, nothing says quality and safety like Harbor Freight. Where low prices meet low people. All right, I got my cart full of goodies, ready to spend this month's paycheck. Got my coupler, safety chains, trailer jack, and lights. Oh my God, we're all gonna die. All right, so I got the Harbor Freight trailer bits all welded on. Got my tongue thingy, jack thing. Uh, guess that's it for now. But uh, she's ready to move around. I can pick it up and move it around by hand. Jack works pretty good. Jack folds up out of the way nicely. Went as overkill as I could on all the welding on this thing. Burned it in on all the sides, the top, these, and then I'm gonna throw probably a couple bolts. Ooh, hot. Throw a couple bolts in the side just in case, because you never know. Even though my welds turned out pretty good, they penetrated real nice, so not too worried about it. Uh, I'm gonna box this in a little bit more. Welding gas is getting low, so I had to stop on some of the welds. So I still got a few more to do like here, but the main structure is together. All my structural welds are done, so. She's all springy and bouncy on her own suspension. Ooh, let's make everybody sick. All right, so now that y'all are ready to puke, let's hop on down out of here. So these are the fenders I'm gonna go with. This came from Tractor Supply. I've had this a few years, it's all rusty. It's for a different project than I never did, but I basically designed my wheel openings around that dimension. I think it's a 33 or a 34 inch diameter circle. It's a stock S10 tire, so that'll work perfect. So I'm gonna get me one more of these. And then kind of weld it down in there. So that'll be my wheel tubs. Enough talking about stupid crap, let's put a motor on this thing. Behold, the power of cheese. All right, well, except for my flat tire over there, we ain't looking too shabby. So what I did was I had a old engine cradle from a different project that happened to work perfect for this. Just got the rubber mounts on the front, bolted it to a beam, welded the beam to the trailer. Front's done. Back's all janky right now. I'm gonna have to get two more rubber motor mounts and rig up some kind of a plate back here that's rubber isolated. If you got rubber on one end and metal on the other end, you're gonna crack probably right here on this setup. So don't wanna crack my block, so I gotta do something, but I'll get it later. So something doesn't look quite right. There we go, that looks much better. No real reason to run the exhaust down when I can make it run up and look all stupid like. So I'll just make a little Y pipe, comes off this, shoots down under the frame. Only reason I'll shoot down is I'm gonna put water tanks right here, so don't want them to melt. Onto the pressure head. 